So going through the process, being, you know, a nurse and the patient at the same time was interesting. I would come to work and also do my monitoring appointments. That was today's guest, Whitney Bischoff Angel. Now, if the name Whitney Bischoff is familiar to you, well, that's because she was on season 19 of The Bachelor. Actually, scratch that. She won season 19 of The Bachelor. But today, that's not what we're here to discuss. Whitney's been very busy since her big television debut, and today she's going to share her experiences with fertility preservation, also known as egg freezing. Whitney, as she just alluded to, has a different perspective on egg freezing than many, as she's not only frozen her own eggs, but she's also a nurse working at a fertility clinic that specializes in egg freezing. So today, Whitney is going to share her experience, why she chose to freeze her eggs, and how that process worked for her. And she's also going to educate us a little bit about OVA, the Specialty Egg Freezing Center in Chicago. I'm Julie Campbell with Progeny, and this is Infertility. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of This is Infertility, where we share people's personal experiences with fertility and family building. Now before we dive in, I just want to take a second to remind you that we have some resources available for anyone who might want to bring comprehensive, equitable, and inclusive fertility and family building benefits to their employer at progeny.com slash talk to HR. Most employers that offer these benefits do so because an employee asks for it. So take advantage of our resources and help bring our life-changing benefit to your employer. As I said at the top of the episode, today we're going to get to know Whitney and her experience with egg freezing. And here's a fun fact, I actually have a few things in common with Whitney. I too have worked in the fertility industry for a really long time, and I also made the decision to freeze my eggs and preserve my fertility. Needless to say, I'm very excited to hear from Whitney today. So let's dive in. My name is Whitney Bischoff Angel, and I am a senior egg freezing nurse coordinator at OVA Egg Freezing Specialty Center in Chicago. And I'm also a women's health educator, and I've been a patient myself. Whitney has been working as a fertility nurse for over 15 years at this point. But let's go back in time to when she just started working at the clinic. At the time, she was working primarily in third-party reproductive services, so patients who were using egg and donor sperm or a gestational carrier. And in that role, she kept hearing the same thing. And part of my job as a nurse is listening. You know, I mean, it's the it's a lot of what you would expect as far as medication instruction and injection teaches, but listening and just being there for these women when they're going through such a difficult time in their life. Um, and just kind of being a sounding board for them. But with this specific demographic, I was hearing often, I wish I would have had the opportunity to freeze my eggs. I wish I could go back in time and make that decision for myself. And for me, that was like a light bulb that went off in my head because for a lot of these women, Egg freezing wasn't even an option because the science wasn't there yet, but we were just starting to hear whisperings of egg freezing. It was gaining a little bit more traction and more momentum. And I always say that I know nothing about life, but I always knew that I wanted to be a mom. So if there was anything that I could do to help control that or give me just a boost in my chances, I was going to take that opportunity. Um, so that's, that's when I made that decision that I I was going to kind of take my nursing hat off and put my patient hat on. And I, I trusted the science. I trusted the experts that I was working with. And I, I made the leap to freeze my eggs in 2013. Whitney decided that she would move ahead and freeze her own eggs. I am a naturally anxious person. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of anxiety that goes into any decision that I make in my life. And this was no different. But I, I did have the advantage of you know, being a nurse and working very closely with, you know, the physicians and the team um, that it did give me a little bit more reassur reassurance and comfort going into it. But I think something that was so eye opening for me is the questions that I got when I told others that I was going through the process. The the comments, the judgment, the stereotypes kind of surrounding it and and also how little women in my own circle knew about their own bodies. It was pretty, it was pretty astonishing to me that when I would explain to women why I was freezing my eggs, that many women didn't know that they were born with all of the eggs that they would have in their lifetime. Many women didn't know that their fertility was always declining. So at the same time that I was making this decision for myself, it was also piquing my interest in terms of 
wow, this is somewhat of a passion project. We have a lot to learn and a lot to teach, you know, everyone around us. Now, there's no getting around it, really. Egg freezing is a wonderful option, but there is a financial cost that has to be taken into account. It is an investment into your future, and it was something that I was willing to do. I mean, again, I I had the advantage of working within the clinic, so that helped offset some of the cost, but it was something that, to me, there was no amount of money that I could put a cost on just the reassurance of having the option to have a family in the future, if that's what it was going to give me. As I mentioned, I also work in the fertility industry, and I too chose to freeze my eggs. So I was very much in the same boat as Whitney. For me, I had the added advantage of having fertility benefits coverage for my employer, Progeny, which helped me to afford the cost of my treatment. If you have the Progeny benefit, you should call your patient care advocate to learn more about your coverage and your options. And if you don't have the benefit, then you should check out the resources that we have at progeny.com slash talk to HR. I can tell you that employees talking to HR about their benefits is truly a powerful thing, and it's a big reason why employers choose to add these benefits. Not to mention the fact that Progeny can also help advocate on your behalf. So Whitney was fully ready to move forward. She was now a fertility nurse and a patient undergoing fertility treatment. So going through the process, being you know a nurse and the patient at the same time was interesting. I would come to work and also do my monitoring appointments. So it was kind of hand in hand and it kind of took some of that time commitment, um, this constraints a lot of times that women talk about with having to figure out when they're going to go in for their appointments. For me, it was kind of nice to knock both of those out and just, you know, just a normal day. Um, but I, I prepared myself for the worst. You know, I was preparing myself to feel just so awful and run down and tired. And I was presently surprised, pleasantly surprised, excuse me, um, because I, you know, I didn't feel too much of a change. Obviously I did feel bloated, which we want, you know, patients to feel. I think everyone all, all thinks, you know, oh my gosh, I don't want to feel bloated. And by no means is that fun, but in a sense, then it lets us know that you're responding to the medications and you're having, you know, follicular development and hopefully an egg inside. Um, but I, I have to admit that I was pleasantly surprised with how quickly it went by, how smoothly it went by, and just the recovery from it all. I, too, have spoken to a lot of people who have frozen their eggs, and I've heard that a lot, mainly that the process isn't quite as bad as they expected. The experience is different for everybody. For me, my experience was way easier than I had expected, too. The egg freezing process usually takes anywhere from 8 to 12 days once everything is ready to begin. Egg freezing is definitely a time commitment. You know, it's about 10 to 14 days of going through the stimulation period when you're giving yourself the injections and coming in and out of the office for blood and ultrasound to see how you're responding to the current dose of the medications that you're on. So if the physician needs to titrate those at all, you can do that by that evening. So I would say, you know, on average, we're seeing women in our clinic about six or seven times throughout that two week period. I can't recall exactly how many times I went in personally through my own journey. Um, also specifically because I was going to work every day. So I can't remember out of those days when I was having an ultrasound. Um, but typically, you know, again, about those 10 to 14 days of giving yourself the injections, it starts many times with two injections, depending on what the protocol the physician is choosing, and then kind of ups to three. Um, and then when you're ready for the retrieval, you know, you give yourself that final shot, that trigger shot, that one that's so time sensitive. Um, and, you know, throughout the cycle, I, I always thought that it was pretty mesmerizing to when I was doing the ultrasound and looking at my blood results to see my body responding, to see those follicles growing, to see my estrogen levels, you know, gradually increasing. It, it's amazing what the woman's body can do. After all of the daily injections and monitoring appointments came the egg retrieval. It does cause, I think, the most anxiety because it's the unknown, but when it's all said and done, I feel like it's the easiest day of all. Um, you know, it, it is a surgical procedure, so you do have to, you know, get prepared with a little pre-op and vitals and getting an IV started, but you drift off into a nice sleep and don't remember or feel anything. Um, I just remember waking up and being told that I retrieved 17 eggs, which I was very ecstatic about and just ready to eat. I was starving. <laughs> I know that when I froze my eggs, it felt like a weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. I too wanted nothing more than a juicy cheeseburger and french fries. For Whitney, it sounds like freezing her eggs was the right choice for her. 
By making the choice to freeze my eggs, it was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. And I have to say, out of all of the years that I've been a fertility nurse and all the women that I've worked with, I've never heard someone say, I regret freezing my eggs. Life has a funny way of its own twists and turns, and you can try to plan out life as you know much as you, you want to, and it's never going to go as you have planned in your head. But the one constant I always had was I had my eggs frozen. So that was the peace of mind I always needed. Now, often when we do these episodes, it's with someone who just recently froze their eggs. But today, we have a different perspective. See, it's been years since Whitney chose to freeze her eggs, and quite a lot has happened since then. I did, you know, go on. I met a wonderful man. We got married, and we were, you know, ready to start our family. And I, I needed to sometimes take a step back and take my own, my own nursing advice that I was giving to patients because... We tried and after a couple months without success, I'm like, something's wrong. You know, why, you know, why am I not getting pregnant immediately? And I knew that it could take women, you know, less than 35. It's very normal for them to take a year of trying to get pregnant before their success. But when it's on your own timeline, you want it to work immediately. So I remember calling Dr. Brian Kaplan, who's the physician that I froze my eggs with and who I worked with at the time. And he, you know, was like, okay, let's, let's take a breather. And, you know, he asked me this question that I still remember him saying, how many children do you want to have? And I knew I wanted to have more than one child and I'm only continuing to get older. My fertility is only continuing to decline. So I didn't want to touch those eggs unless I absolutely needed them. So I was patient and I ended up con conceiving naturally. Um, and we, you know, have a very healthy, almost five-year-old little boy. But when it was time for us to start thinking about expanding our family further, I um, had a very unexpected health crisis that had to put that on hold. So I needed to tackle that. And of course, you know, I think when women freeze their eggs, you you often don't think about maybe needing them for baby number two or baby number three. But you also don't think about the unexpected things like a global pandemic, like a health crisis for yourself or some a loved one. Um, and that definitely caught me off guard. Um, but there was a lot of question of, am I ever going to be able to have another baby or carry another baby? Am I going to need a surrogate? So that started to raise a lot of questions of, OK, I froze these eggs. What am I working with? You know, you know, the science. Although it was good, it's definitely improved so much. In 2013, it was still somewhat experimental. What if I need to go through another round of egg retrieval? I wanted to know what I was working with. So we did go ahead and thaw the eggs to fertilize them. And I, you know, this just kind of is a testament to the laboratory and the embryologist because they thawed beautifully, they fertilized beautifully, and I was very lucky to have about 10 embryos to work with. Um, so that was the peace of mind, again, that I needed that, okay, now I can just solely put all of my energy towards, you know, my what was going on with my health and didn't feel that pressure again with my biological clock. Um, when I finally was given the clearance that I could have a baby by the grace of God. Um, we did attempt one transfer, which was unfortunately not successful, but we were ready. That's why you have multiple embryos. We were ready to, you know, gear up and go for um, another transfer. Um, unfortunately, I did, you know, struggle with a few natural miscarriages and an ectopic, but I ended up getting pregnant naturally. Isn't that interesting how that happens? Like we were getting ready to go in for baseline to prepare for that second transfer and I'm pregnant. So I still have my embryos on ice for maybe baby number three because I am no spring chicken. Um, but again, I just, I cannot recommend egg freezing. I mean, it, it, I can't recommend it enough, especially given just my experience with the unknown and how your life just kind of takes so many twists and turns. Again, I know I say it all the time, but that was my constant. That was something that gave me so much relief, gave me so much reassurance that I didn't have to be focused on that. And I could focus my attention on other things that were, you know, needed to be at the forefront, like my health.
Now, we mentioned at the top of the episode that Whitney won season 19 of The Bachelor, and that has given her quite a good amount of notoriety. She has a rather large following on Instagram, and she's decided to use that platform to help raise awareness about fertility preservation. I was given this this platform, this public platform, and I have to be completely honest and transparent that I was very nervous about sharing my story for what others may say or have an opinion on. But as I mentioned, there was so I knew how much education that women around us, how much was unknown and that women needed to be, you know, advocated for just with our own bodies. It's not something that we talk about often. And so to be able to have this platform to discuss and reach, you know, women on such an important topic, I knew I needed to take it. And I'm so glad that I did because the amount of just positive responses and people reaching out and thanking me for sharing their story, it it really did warm my heart and made me realize like I'm doing the right thing and I haven't stopped ever since. I feel like sharing your story, whether it's mine or anyone, you know, a patient or anyone around me that's gone through this experience forms a community, lets people around you know that they're not alone and We really are all in this together as women and we need to stick together. And I think by sharing our voice and our experience, it makes that even easier. I think it's so impactful when someone like Whitney uses their platform to speak out about fertility and undergoing fertility treatment. Remember, Whitney is a fertility nurse at a clinic that specializes in egg freezing. So we asked if her own experiences with fertility preservation inform her day-to-day work in any way. I feel like my experience of going through egg freezing, going through, you know, fertility struggles myself has in turn, it's made me be a better nurse because I understand the other side of it. So when I'm talking with a patient that's contemplating egg freezing and I'm saying, you know, this is what you're to expect. This is the side effects that you may expect. This is what the recovery is like. I think it helps to say, and I've been there, I've done this. So I'm speaking from my own experience. And a lot of times you can just see the patients like, oh, you know, it makes them feel like they, again, can relate to you more. They can trust your your story and what you're telling them because you've been there. Um, so I do feel like my own journey, my own experience has helped me be a better nurse. I hope so, at least. <laughs> I have no doubt that Whitney's experience has made her a better nurse. Whitney works at a fertility clinic that specializes in egg freezing, so nearly all of her patients are there to undergo fertility preservation or to use eggs that they previously froze. So OVA is an egg freezing specialty center um, located in downtown Chicago. and. Our name can be a bit deceiving. So we don't just do egg freezing. We do fertility preservation. And we also feel like continuity of care is super important. So any patient that has come to us for fertility preservation and is interested in coming back to use their eggs or their embryos, we also are their partner for their second half of the journey as well. You might wonder why a specialty egg freezing clinic would be necessary. Why not just go to an IVF clinic? Well, Whitney has some pretty good reasons. I feel like, Ova, we stand apart in many different ways. Number one, we offer a very customized, um, you know, VIP approach to our patients. So all of our patients, we like to think of them as they're our partners or we're their partners through this entire journey. So we are with them, you know, from the very beginning when they're just coming in to learn about fertility preservation, all the way to the end, whatever that means for that specific patient. Um, They have a direct contact with us. They have our cell phone numbers. You know, we form relationships with them. It is a very personalized experience. And, uh, you know, after working in a fertility clinic and obviously being with OVA, the differences are night and day. There's not that there's one better than the other. It's more about the connection and the experience that the patient receives. Another thing that makes OVA, I think, stand out is that we really try to accommodate the working woman um, and around her schedule. So in some traditional IVF facilities, they say, hey, you know, you have to come in between this hour and this hour. If you can't make it, tough luck. You know, for us, we have come into the office sometimes as early as like 5.30 to see patients before work. Um, You know, we really are trying to make egg freezing or fertility preservation accessible for everyone. And if that means that we have to come in a little bit early or we need to tweak our schedule a little bit for the patient, we're going to do that. 
I want to thank Whitney for sharing her experience with us here today. And we want to thank you for listening. Remember, the purpose of stories like this isn't to give you a blueprint of how you can or should build your family, but rather to give you comfort in knowing that you aren't alone in this journey and that you do have options. There are a lot of people who are going through their own unique journeys, and while not all endings are the same, we hope that you can take some comfort in knowing that there are options and support out there for everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. If you want to connect with us, you can do so on Instagram at This Is Infertility Podcast. If you want to follow Progeny, you can do so at Progeny Inc. Of course, if you're listening on a podcast app, please leave a rating and a review. This Is Infertility is brought to you by Progeny. Please remember, this podcast is not intended to substitute for the personalized expert advice of your physician. I'm Julie Campbell, and this is Infertility.